here at the E.T. attraction at Universal Studios Hollywood. If E.T. called home, it would be truly long distance, but a lot quicker than making an extraterrestrial trip. The same holds true for some earthbound commuters who are pioneering a new way to get to work. A typical Southern California Monday morning. Chris Ogden lives in West Hollywood. He works for GTE in Thousand Oaks, 32 miles away. It's 8 a.m. and Chris is late for work. But not now. Chris's office is only a few steps away. A quick phone call and he's on the job, reporting to his boss in Thousand Oaks. Great, thank you. Three days a week, Chris stays home and communicates to work instead of commuting. He's a telecommuter. A lot of what I do is analysis with computers and making a lot of phone calls. So that really helps out because it doesn't matter where I do it as long as I, I can get to a phone and a computer. One of the advantages to my working at home is that I can use our electronic mail system, our voicemail, make a telephone call to anyone else. I can send and receive faxes and I can get them right out of my computer. So any analyses or last minute changes that we have to do, we can zap them out there right away. Telecommuting has a number of other environmental advantages. Fewer commuters means fewer cars. Fewer cars means less congestion and most important, reduced air pollution. With Southern California's tough air quality standards, exploring alternatives like telecommuting is becoming a way of life. Patrick Sabala is a telecommuter who lives in Dublin. I'll bet all those people over there on the other side right now on the, they're stuck in that bumper to bumper traffic. I know what they're thinking. There's gotta be a better way. For Patrick, telecommuting is that better way. He doesn't work at home, but now his morning drive is seven miles instead of 70. Most days, he goes to this Ontario office building close to home. It's located in a GTE smart park, a business complex wired for the future. Inside is an experimental telebusiness work center. Here, local companies lease space for their telecommuting employees. Along with telephones and computers, the work center has all the other office amenities, including copiers and fax machines. GTE's Peggy Matsuda. Telebusiness work centers have a really exciting future. And I think, depending on who you talk to, you can talk to the economic developers, and they'll tell you a lot about the economic development implications of bringing new industries and new businesses into their communities. You can talk to high-tech companies like my own, and we'll talk to you all about the telecommunications capabilities that we're developing and that we have developed that have tremendous potential in the telebusiness work center concept. Then you can talk to the environmental and they'll explain all about the air quality benefits for that. This is one of those unique programs. There are benefits for everybody. Everybody wins when you look at a telebusiness work center concept. Steve Pontel is president of the Inland Empire Economic Council. The largest single export of the Inland Empire is people. We send about 400,000 people a day into Los Angeles and Orange County to work, and they work there, get their paycheck, come back into the Inland Empire and spend it. Um, we believe that a, a significant economic development tactic is to move the work to the people as opposed to the people to the work. It seems too good to be true, but is the world ready for telecommuting? Communications consultant Jack Nellis. The usual problem with, with people first uh, being introduced to this is they tend to think in the extremes. Well, you know, if people telecommute, for example, you'll never see them again. The manager's reaction to this is say, well, you know, we're going to have some of your people work at home. Invariably says, oh my God, you know, I have no idea what they're doing. If, if they go at home, you know, how do I know what they're doing if I can't see them? Productivity is going to go down the tubes, they're going to be out at the beach, they're going to be playing golf, you know, all these things. And I am going to be in serious trouble in a month or two when my boss discovers that those people aren't doing anything. What happens in reality is that an employee who has picked to be a telecommuter all of a sudden takes on the responsibility of doing the work himself or herself. It's my job to get the work done. They work harder than if they're in the office. They are significantly more productive. Their stress levels are way down. Their morale is way up. 
Now, when Patrick Sabala leaves work, thanks to telecommuting, he not only faces less time on the road, he's saving money on travel costs and contributing to a cleaner environment. And at home, there's even a bigger benefit. I believe the companies have to, to come to terms with the, uh, the traffic and the smog that's out on the freeways. The labor pool is moving far and far they're away from Los Angeles. Now I look forward to the end of the day. It's things that I'm going to be doing with my family, in particular my son. We have either Little League Baseball or Karate. And now I'm allowed the time to spend with my family versus that used to be the time I was driving home. To me, quality time is just being with them. And that's what counts the most to me. One of the best things about Southern California is being able to get away to the beach. But getting away on a summer day can be far from relaxing, especially if you have to face the typical weekend traffic jam. Not if you take an RTD bus or Metro Blue Line. RTD's new Blue Line is a perfect way to experience the harborside pleasures of Long Beach. Hop an RTD bus, and in no time, you're ready to stroll along the boardwalk at Venice. Another bus lets you sample the sand and surf at Santa Monica. You can even go as far as Malibu, close by an RTD bus stop on the Pacific Coast Highway. Call 213-626-4455 for more information about RTD routes to the sun, surf, and other attractions Southern California's beaches. Well, that's it. Next time, a special edition of Transit 2000. In the next few months, thousands of people are going to be trading traffic jams for a new generation of rail transportation. We'll give you a behind-the-scenes preview of coming attractions. We'll go underground for a peek at the new RTD Red Line and its unique subway art. And we'll take a ride on the future of commuter rail transportation. Today, the Metro Blue Line. Tomorrow, Metro Link. Finally, we'll explore an expanded and environmentally conscious bus system tying it all together. It's quite a story. Next on Transit 2000. We'll see you then. Bye-bye.